Greetings everyone, Father Hogan here, good to be with you. Before we begin today's meditation, I'd like to draw our attention to the Apostolic Penitentiary, who is offering the Church plenary indulgence to those who are suffering from the coronavirus and those who are also praying for the end of the coronavirus. You can find more information in the description below with a link. And now without further ado, let us begin today's meditation. As usual, if you'd like to pause the video to go grab your Bibles. Now let us begin. Today's first reading comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, that is the 65th chapter. And Isaiah is speaking on behalf of the Lord to the people. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. I think for many of us, this new heavens and the new earth, at least in the short front time frame, could be just the ability to go back to our normal routines or normal activities. But for the given time, our Lord has given us the great opportunity to exercise hope, a theological virtue. Because we see that this new heavens and a new earth will be characteristic of a couple things. That is, there shall always be rejoicing and happiness in what God creates. No longer shall there be the sound of weeping be heard or the sound of crying. You know, I think for the cycle for all of us, at least for many of us, is a cycle of pain and rejoicing, pain rejoicing. Think of like an athlete who sh strives to do well in his training to accomplish a goal, a championship, a good season, even for the academics, those who study hard to do well in their exams, to pass, to graduate. And at the end of every semester, at least for me, there's a great sigh of relief of knowing that all, all that hard work has produced great fruit. Not only uh, education for myself, but discipline to exercise these great gifts that God's given to us. And so with that, the same is true in the spiritual life, is that we go through a period of suffering, in many ways physical suffering, uh, existential suffering, to produce great fruit. Because there will be a definitive end to our suffering on this earth. For at one point, the book of Revelation refers us that all of this will eventually pass away. And with that great hope, Revelation simply means an unveiling, that this new heavens and new earth that the prophet Isaiah is foretelling in today is also the end, the definitive end of this uh, world of suffering and pain. And so with that, we just must hope and pray in the timing and the providence of God. Although that God does not always show up when we want Him to, I want to reassure everybody today that God is never late. That the delay in answering our prayers does not mean God's denial of our prayers. We're just simply waiting for the providence of God, as the book of Ecclesiastes speaks, that there's a time and place for everything. So if there's a time and place for everything, let us refer today to the gospel in which our second reading takes place. Again, this is another healing of a royal official's son. We're taken now from the gospel of John, the fourth chapter. And hopefully that we all understand that the miracles of Jesus really provide credibility for his ministry, that Jesus is just not a prophet among many, but rather with his miracles, uh, raising people from the dead like Lazarus, is showing a definitive sign of his messiahship, or uh, just the fact of how he's setting himself apart from all these other teachers. That God comes to us in three ways. He's either a liar, that everything he says you can't really believe, he's a lunatic, He's crazy or he's the Lord and if he's the Lord that much of what he does is meant to redeem humanity we see in today's gospel about how he's in the region of Galilee Galilee as we know is a very famous site because that's where the wedding feast of Cana took place Jesus first miracle of changing water into wine you see that's always the intention of God to restore humanity from its fallen state I think for many of us, we assume the opposite, that if something bad goes wrong, like with the coronavirus or something, as an earthquake or a natural disaster, that God is the first to blame. I want to reassure everybody again that God is always interested in our human flourishing. He does not seek the demise of human beings, but rather wants to alleviate our pain. And so, the answering of the royal official's son, like all of us, is that Jesus will, he will heal us in our time of need. The question is, what do you want God to do for you? Because God is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. His whole mission is to remove the sin from this world. 
Jesus asks us very clearly, how can I help you? And that's maybe our prayer today. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for these readings. We thank you for wanting to restore a new heaven and a new earth. That you come to us as the Lord who has risen from the dead to come actively to pursue us. By your grace, restore our humanity, our fallen state, to experience the joy of the resurrection. For we make this prayer in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, the resurrection from the dead, assist us today in our prayers. And may assist you at your time of need. God bless.